Well, good afternoon. I see uh, 12 noon, and uh, I think we should get started. Um, thanks for joining us today. My name is Sandy Ratliff. I'm with Virginia Community Capital. If you're not familiar with us, we are a, a community development financial institution providing lending, investing, and uh, community innovation services. We're happy to partner in this series with the Washington County Chamber of Commerce, uh, the town of Abington and the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubator. And um, this program was started in 2004, or excuse me, 2014 to support the Washington County Business Challenge, which we're right in the middle of our eighth year of the Business Challenge with about $36,000 in prize uh, awards to give out. But we started the new knowledge se series to help continue that um, supporting our small business um, uh, startups and existing businesses to provide that additional professional development that they need. A little housekeeping, today's session will be recorded as for training and educational purposes um, that will also be uploaded to the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubators Facebook page. And we have a YouTube channel, uh, New Knowledge, with well over a hundred uh, on-demand workshops that are available for you. So um, even, uh, I know Mark, uh, Bill's going to share with a lot. And if you can't catch it all today, you can also go back that, uh, go back and watch that. Now, in order to keep our webinar flowing, we have muted everyone, but I know Bill, um, our presenter today, wants to hear from you. So if you have questions, please post those in the Q&A section and we will address those um, uh, during and especially after the, the session. I'm excited to be talking about my favorite subject today, which is marketing. Uh, for anyone that knows me, I love all parts of, of marketing, and I feel like that's an extremely important component of any business. It's not by um, build it and they will come. They have to know how to find you, what you have to offer over your competition, and that's why I'm extremely happy to have Bill May with Stellar Studios in Johnson City uh, leading the session. You know, Bill's love for art and design and computers got him in uh, the ad design business very early in his career. I think it was even before you got out of high school. I was reading about that on your uh, uh, on your website. Yes. Uh, and he started uh, Stellar Studios in 1998. And I'm sure uh, Bill will share more uh, about um, himself and Stellar Studios. So, Bill, I am going to uh, I'm going to turn the session over to you and. Um, and welcome. Thanks for joining uh, us. Yes, thanks for having me. Um, good to see everyone, talk to everyone. Uh, so I'm going to start sharing and dive right in here. And let's play this. So yeah, um, I'm Bill May with Stellar Studios. And yes, who is Stellar Studios anyway? We are a digital agency focused on creation and marketing of digital properties. And like she said, we have been doing this since 1998. So, you know, if you look to the picture of the right, some of you guys may not even know what those are, but yes, uh, US Robotics dial-up modems, America Online, Netscape, um, and 1998 was also the time that Google launched. So it was a fun year for uh, everything digital and seeing everything grow so much since 1998. Um, we specialize in, like I said, digital uh, SEO, SEM, which is search engine optimization and search engine marketing. And that's, you know, optimizing organically is the um, optimization. Marketing is your pay-per-click. And uh, we also specialize in social marketing, websites, uh, e-commerce, connected online applications. And that's a little bit... Um, beyond your standard website where, you know, that uh, things connect with each other. Um, and then connected mobile applications, which has become a, a huge thing in iOS and the Android space where applications now can connect to your digital properties and you can, can check everything or do your business on the go as we have pretty much had to do for the last year. So what 2020 has proven, um, digital was always growing long before COVID, but this pandemic has really put another set of booster rockets on uh, digital. You know, it was 
it, it taught us that, you know, things can change so quickly and everything digital has allowed that change to happen even faster um, because, you know, everything moves so quickly that we've got to adapt our business almost as quickly. So, you know, when, when this all hit, you know, I was, I was actually on a cruise ship and I just happened to check Facebook and seen everything blowing up about COVID and started making plans right there on what we're going to do because I could see that this was going to happen. Did I know it was going to last this long? No, I, I wished it hadn't, but um, it has. So, you know, if you didn't have a strong online presence or digital strategy, when all this hit, you know, while you were trying to adapt and pivot and formulate one, those who already had one, they, they were gaining your market share because they were already in the places that you maybe lacked on or said that, you know, I'll get to that eventually or whatever. But um, again, as everything has unfolded, we can see that this definitely has created a influx of the need for digital um, and not just marketing, but digital marketing for sure but workflows as well. Um, you know, as people start working remotely, you know, they, they need to communicate with each other and it, it's, it's a necessary evil now um, to create those infrastructures. And that's where I talk about connected applications and uh, setting up those digital pathways for everyone to communicate within the business. So, you know, there are many ways to market digitally. And um, I think, you know, we need to pursue both the standard avenues and uh, kind of the non-standard ones, you know, be where your consumers or clients are, you know, in any given digital space. Uh, you don't have to hit them all, you know, that's virtually impossible to do, but hit the high points where you think that, um, most of your customers are, and you can find those, you know, hopefully you've already got, you know, at least a small website or some, you know, some social traction where you can go in and look at analytics. Um, there is also, you know, with again, digital being so prevalent now, big data where you can tap into to find out where your customers or clients are or where um, the best targets to hit them on, you know, is okay. If it's this age demographic is your largest customer base where well, you can find out that, okay, for, uh, age X to X, well, they're all on Facebook, uh, millennial age X to X, they're probably on TikTok more than they are Facebook. So you can find those things out and, um, target your audience there. Um, because as Brian Solis says very, very eloquently, um, digital Darwinism is the evolution of consumer behavior when society and technology evolve faster than our ability to adapt. Digital Darwinism does not discriminate. So it, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's all a part of business now and everything, you know, is progressing faster and faster. And it's hard to keep up sometimes. Or even us sometimes it's it's hard to keep up with the newest trends and things like that. But but you have to you have to dedicate some time um, if you're a business owner. You have to dedicate some time to look at your digital strategies, um, or even just as simple as doing a Facebook post or checking you know the, your last Facebook post that you did. And speaking of social, you. have I'm going to start basic and then ramp up into um, greater, greater things and a little bit more forward thinking marketing. So welcome to my social channels. If you don't be active on social, um, you're, you're missing a lot of potential business. And I, uh, I see a lot of small businesses that if this were, if your social channel was a city, this would be it. Um, and that's not the way to market your business. You, you don't want people to 
see this mental image when they see you online digitally in the social channels. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about social beyond a post. We all know how to, or hopefully we all know how to do a post. Um, we know it's tough to stay active on social, but, but it works. It, it's got, you've got to do it. Um, not only does it engage and interact with your audience because, you know, 79 to 80% of the U S population is on social on some channel, you know, it, it may be split up demographically by Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, all those social channels, and you don't have to focus on them all, but there are also tools that would allow you to post in one place and then it uploads everywhere. Uh, but those tools cost money. So a lot of times smaller businesses don't have that money to invest. So it takes a little bit of time um, just to go ahead and create a post. And it, it doesn't have to be, you know, so spend days, you know, trying to come up with the perfect um, post or the thing that you think will get your audience's attention most. It's in social people, people, expect and want to know that there is a face behind that business. So engaging with them on somewhat of a personal level helps them know that there is a person behind that business. But not only does it engage your audience, it also feeds into other algorithms, um, which helps your uh, search, which is your search engine ranking position. And that's a part of SEO, which I spoke to er earlier is your SEO um, helps you pop up organically without paying for those clicks each time. And more importantly than frequency of posts is you got to interact with them. Um, yeah, and it's okay and encouraged to like and share your own business post on your own personal page. So if you know you post something to your business and then you hop over on your business page and then you hop over to your personal page and you see it in your newsfeed, it's, it's encouraged to like it and to share it um, because those boost the algorithms just a little bit. Now they do know that you're the owner of the page. So it doesn't, it's not as much as a boost as if someone else interacted with it. So you have a wife or a, child or whatever, or teenagers in the house that's on those social channels, ask them to like it, ask them to share it if they will. Um, and more importantly is whenever a person comments, comment and like back as your business page, though not as your personal page. Um, this again, adjusts the algorithms so that your post is shown to more people. Um, and it also, like I said earlier, makes it feel like there is a person behind the posts and behind the business. And it, it adds a level of um, human to it. And it also, believe it or not, it excites the, um, the person who commented, especially, you know, on, in big brands. I, I know I feel it myself when I do a comment and the big brand comments back or um likes it or whatever, it, it feels good. And you can do that same thing to your people who interact with, um, with your posts. And again, it boosts algorithms, which pushes your post out to more people organically without having to do small boosts. Which brings me to the next point. If you've got one that you think that, you know, um, could gain some traction, but it's just really not picking up yet because like Facebook, for example, they do limit, they used to not, but they do limit how many people will see your post. Um, even if they like your page, chances are only a very small percentage of the people who like your page will see that post unless it starts getting traction and interaction, then they'll start pushing it out to more of the people that like your page. But you can do small 10 to $20 boosts over the period of two to three days to help get the ball rolling and 
sometimes, you know, if it is a good post, it will create a snowball effect. And that 10 10 to $20 small post, um, post boost will help increase the algorithm popularity and push it out to other people that are not just page likes, but um, it, it'll push it out to people that you can define the audiences with. Um, or, you know, Facebook has their own that says um, people who like this page and similar groups. So it would be a demographic of the people who like your page and then um, share that to people who have same interests. So that helps create a snowball effect, which could make everything grow. And once you start getting one of those um, boosts that not even boosted or organically, or one that starts taking off a little bit, you'll start to see that other people who don't like your page are liking this post. Main thing is, is you can, as a page owner, you can go in there and you can see who liked your page. And when you click that to, or touch on it, uh, to see who liked your page, well, Facebook pops up and encourages you to invite them to like your page so they can see more future posts. And it's a very simple thing. Um, A lot of people look over that part. Uh, Some do it, but make sure that when you do have one that's, you know, even 10, 20 likes and you pop open to see who they are, look to see if they've been invited or already liked. It'll, it'll tell you. And then it's also got the button right there. It says invite, 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 do them all, invite them all. Um, you can also, another thing to do is jump into groups where your product or service may be beneficial. Um, you do have to be careful here because you don't want to, I look at groups like um, a group of people socializing in a bar atmosphere and they're sitting around talking about like-minded things. And if I were in that group and then some guy just walks up to me and starts trying to sell me something, I'm going to brush him off and be like, go away, man. Uh, So in, in these type of scenarios, you want to interject it, interject your insights, be helpful, share any success stories. And then slowly, as you start to do this more often, You'll become the authority. You'll be the go-to person and people will start tagging you in those groups. And then whatever your product or service is, is, you will be the first person that people think of when your um, product or service is mentioned outside of that group and you start getting tagged in other things. So like for us, for example, you know, I'll jump in groups where people have problems um, creating websites, or maybe they've even they've created their own on Squarespace and they can't get something worked out. I'll go in, jump in, help them get it worked out. And uh, a lot of times they have tagged me in other posts and said, hey, this guy knows how to do it. And it's actually turned into a business where they haven't um, built the site yet and just said, well, how much for you to just go ahead and build it for me, and then we'll build it. And uh, so being authoritative and the go-to person in those those social groups uh, is is a great thing. And forums is the same way. Be active in those and help anywhere you can. Um, (coughs) Another thing you can do uh, in the social space is Influencer marketing. Um, influencer marketing is kind of like a, a word of mouth and type of thing. And they're, they're in every aspect of business, whether it's fly fishermen, whether it's um, uh, race cars, whether it's whatever the subject may be, you know, whether it's interior design or whatever, you're going to have people that have a decent following and that's, you know, they have um, a large number of groups that follow, interact and things like that. And some of those can even be family members. Um, there's, there's a guy up the street here that owns a fly fishing shop and uh, he's friends with a guy who does uh, nothing but 
Instagram and YouTube fly fishing videos, and he has a, a very good following. And you can tap some of those and, you know, even do it as a favor or it's also available as, as paid. So, you know, you can pay someone to, Hey, mention my product or not even just mention it, but, um, you know, say I'm a, I'm a rock star CEO and I, I want somebody to drink my rock star drink while, while they're presenting or shooting something on Facebook or Instagram. So they do that. And then all those in all those people who follow them see the product and say, well, if it's good enough for them, it's definitely good enough for me. Or I want that because she has that. Um, it's a great way to uh, increase brand awareness conversions. Um, and like down here, it says 63% of consumers trust influencers opinions of products. So, and 58% of people have bought a product in the past six months because of an influencer's recommendation. So, you know, being able to seek those out and um, find those is, is key. It, it will help you spread your brand, spread your product, spread your service. And, uh, and like I said, a lot of times, we, especially with the younger group, they already have been on social for a while and have a decent following. And, and a lot of times, you know, if your money's tight, which it is for most during these COVID times, um, you can tap those individuals and don't make it sales pitchy. You know, you, you don't want them to come on and, hey, check out my drink. And, you know, no, none of those infomercials, but, um, but just, just use it in a, in a very elegant way. Uh, and you can see a lot of business from that. Next thing is video. Yep, you're going to be the star of your video. And don't tell me you can't do video because everybody has a smartphone in their pocket. And I started Stellar back in 98 at doing video and a lot. What's in my pocket now is probably 20 times greater than my $30,000 camera back then. So you can do video. Um, that's the main thing is I hear is I don't want to put myself on camera. Well, you also want business. So you got to do it. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's not that bad. And especially after you've done a couple of them, it's no big thing. Um, video marketing is one of the most important marketing trends today. And it, it will stay that way for a good long time. Um, 70% of consumers say that they shared a brand's video. And I know this for fact, I, I work with brands every day and I see the sharing of the videos every day. 72% uh, of businesses say that video has improved their conversion rate. And that is very true. You know, it's uh, us as humans, digital unfortunately has somewhat made us a little lazy. Um, we don't want to read about your product. We don't want a page of just nothing but text. Uh, just give it to me, read it to me. Um, make it a little entertaining while you're reading it to me too, please. So yeah, um, you've got to do video. 52% uh, of consumers say that watching product videos make them more confident in online purchasing decisions. Well, you know, you see this shirt, for example, online and um, it looks great in an image. You see it on a model, but if you take that and then incorporate a video with it. You, now you get to see how it flows, how it lays, how it looks when I turn, you know, it, it's not stiff and it's the, the sleeves are the right length when she extends her arm out and things like that, you know, so it, it does build more confidence in making that final decision. Plus it says, well, I see this in a video now. So it, it, it it's gotta be real. This is not a photoshopped picture where, um, everything is, is changed or could be faked. 65% um, of executives visit the market's web, marketer's website and 39% call a vendor after viewing a video. So 
that means whether they see it online, whether they see it uh, or not online, but on YouTube or some social channel, they'll go to your website to see what you're all about. And even more so, they'll call and uh, schedule a meeting with you or whatever after seeing a video, because again, there's just that reassurance fact factor that this is real. I've seen a video. There's, these are real people. These, these aren't stock images. These aren't um, uh, photoshopped up products or whatever. It, it's all real. So it, it adds that level of confidence in making the decision to call you or not. So again, this reinforces, um, this is a poll of roughly about 60,000 people and says, how do you most prefer to learn about new products or services? Short video, 68%. So yeah, we're not asking you to make a feature film here. Just do a short video about your product or service. Um, and you can see that text base falls in second by, you know, 68% versus 15%. So you can see that people want the information given to them. And not only that, they see for their own eyes that it's real and it's not just polished up words or a polished up image. Um, infographics, 3%, that one actually kind of surprises me as being um, lower than an ebook or manual, but okay. Um, because infographics can take, give you a lot of information in a um, very visual short uh, time frame. Uh, presentation pitches uh, and other 3%. Well, as everything has went digital, you can see, and hence the reason for calling these or recording these, that um, rather than it being a presentation of pitch, they would rather have a video that they can digest at their own time when they're ready, rather than creating a meeting and then giving your presentation pitch. And then, you know, everybody's looking at their clock. Oh, am I going to run over? Am I going to run under whatever? So creating those videos that uh, gives the gist of your business or even, you know, break it out into this part, this part, this part, and make it a series. Um, it will really boost revenue and conversion rates. And one of the best things about video marketing is it has so many legs. I mean, you can use that video for so many things. Um, so imagine that you've recorded a video for your YouTube channel. Instead of just publishing it on YouTube, you can transcribe it um, or have someone transcribe it for you. Uh, and that's just uh, taking your video and then all the words that are said in the video and typing them out. And once you have that, you can publish this trans, uh, transcription to your blog and then embed the video and then include the transcription underneath it. And then Google, Google will use those words to find the key phrases that you're trying to promote. And rather than just putting the YouTube video on there, um, which will give you a small boost, Google now has the words to uh, know what this video is really about. And you can upload the raw video with the transcription as subtitles to Facebook. <clears throat> and native Facebook videos, meaning don't, copy your link from YouTube and share it to Facebook or copy the link and paste it in a Facebook post. Rather, take your video that you've done. If it's on your phone, you know, it's probably saved in your camera roll. Uh, take that video and upload it to Facebook. And then there is um, a place where you can attach your uh, text for the subtitles. And then Facebook lines those up. And that allows people to view it, you know, let's, let's be honest, a lot of people's on Facebook during work, so volume's off, but they can read your subtitles and know what the video is about and secretly learn about your product or service while they're doing whatever. And uh, so that's another way to use video is 
in your social channels is Facebook. Um, and then you can turn that transcription into a standalone blog article. Uh, and you can take, that's where you can use your photos or even screenshots from your video, embed the video and um, put those and turn those into a blog article that you could email out or you could um, later post on uh, one of your social channels. Even though you've already posted the video, if you've got the blog post that people want to read or send along to someone else, it, it, it still helps. And then you can also rip the audio alone and use it as a podcast episode. There are so many um, free websites that allows you to upload podcasts. And um, you just have to be a little bit mindful if you're going to do that when you're shooting the video, you, you, rather than just pointing at your product or service and saying, see this right here, you keep it in the back of your mind that this is also going to be a podcast and explain what you're pointing at uh, so that it works in the standalone audio space only. And again, all of these um, will help with your search engine ranking position and again, make you more authoritative. Uh, you can use video thumbnails in your email campaigns. And if you use the word video in subject lines, you can increase open rates by up to 19%. Again, people love video and whether it's informative video, whether it's entertaining video, whether it's, you know, the, the next person that slips and falls on a, you know, uh, stairs, icy stairs, whatever. People do love video. And uh, just being able to be able to tell more about your product or service through the use of video can really increase conversion rates, traffic, and people buying your product or service. So next we're going to dive a little bit deeper into um, some forward thinking marketing and rise of the AI. And it's all good, well, at least for now, until, you know, anomaly happens or doesn't, whatever. But AI is artificial intelligence and it can help you communicate to your audience more effectively, more efficiently, and a lot of times even completely hands off and have your digital spaces digital properties working while you're sleeping or whatever. So we're going to talk about programmatic AI marketing. Um, so from AI to automated email campaigns, you can use readily available digital tools to do the marketing for you and make it personalized. Um, current AI implementations, you know, you hear AI and, you know, it, it scares a lot of people just because of, the fear of the anomaly one day happening where AI wakes up. Um, we're a long ways away from that. So let's, let's utilize AI and, uh, and make it work for us. We can use it for basic communication. We can use it to do product recommendations on a e-commerce site. So this AI can look at what the user has been viewing on your website and start recommending other products based around what they're viewing. It's already in practice. So is basic communication. And believe it or not, AI is already in use for content creation. Yeah, it's, they're, they're writing stories now. Um, it basically used in, for the most part, in fact-based stories, but um, they are being used. Email personalization. <clears throat> Again, that goes back to <clears throat> almost the same thing as product recommendations. It will um, personalize an email based on things that they have viewed, as long as you have those triggers set up. And then uh, e-commerce transactions. It, it can automatically tell, say, oh, well, I, I see that on this, this, and this device that they've used Apple Pay or Google Wallet two out of three times. Well, what they'll do then, the AI will say, okay, I see that, and I'm going to predict that you're going to want um, 
Apple Pay. So I'm gonna present that button bigger and larger and then the other options, your PayPal's and everything else, smaller. And nine times out of 10, it's the case, that's the one they wanted and it increases the conversion because the button's big present and no one has to look for it. I can impulse click it and I'm done. And artificial intelligence is already in use. And as you can see in this graphic to the right, says AI will grow into a $190 billion industry by 2025. And it, it's not just in the marketing space that this is including, but marketing is a big chunk of it. And two out of three people um, are already using AI, AI and they don't even know it. I mean, it's, you know, your, your Google Assistant, uh, Siri, your... Um, uh, Alexa, all of those use AI and speech recognition, which is a part of the AI, which helps turn your natural language into search things, into uh, search phrases that return the results that you're actually looking for. So in the first one, we're going to talk about chatbots. Um, programmatic marketing with chatbots. Uh, there are entry level based AI chatbots already that you can use free through Facebook. And they're ready to use um, out of the box and uh, with social channel, they can employ the artificial intelligence and help you communicate without you having to monitor it 24 seven. So instead of, you know, every time you get that message sound on your phone, you having to pop open your phone, um, the chat bot free can take care of all of this for you and then turn that person either into a purchase or into a hot lead and that says, you know, you can set up these trigger words that says, once this person reaches this point, um, notify me and I'll jump in and take over the conversation. And um, all those words are definable by you. So, you know, is, is it a quick setup? No, it's not super quick. If you wanna do it right and have it really work for you and really convert, you know, look at spending a good few hours on setting it up, but then it'll save you tons of hours uh, later once you have it set up and this chat bot is, is working for you. And the great thing is, is this is also embeddable on your website. So it's, it's not just Facebook. Um, you can embed that chat bot uh, on your website to handle those communications so that you know, you're, you're funneling down, uh, we call them click funnels. We, you're funneling down the person to the point where you want them to take the call to action and convert to your product or service. So that time invested, those hours invested on your Facebook chat bot, it doesn't, it's got many more legs than just using it on Facebook. And this is an example of a great, chatbot implementation. And you can see that this is uh, a hair salon. And um, so what they've done is, is to adapt because hair salons closing, they started focusing more on the selling of their products and doing some training at, at home on how to do some hair coloring and things like that themselves. So you can see it comes in, hello, beautiful. Um, I'm Mandy Madison Reed's genius bot. So it tells them that they're a bot. Well, what it does is it walks them through the process and tells them to upload an image of themselves. And this chat bot not only uses artificial intelligence to pick up on the words that the human on the other end is saying, but it's also analyzing the picture to try to find the hair color. And so it does a little bit of AI and maps out the face and says, okay, here's the eyes, here's the nose, here's the mouth. Okay, this around here must be the hair color. So then it asks her, what's the hair color? Um, is this correct? And do you want to go lighter, darker, blah, blah, blah. And then once they hit the, see the details, then that can be the trigger for 
the human or your phone on the business side of things to go off and says, all right, I've got a hot lead here for you. They're wanting to see details on the product. Let me jump in and take over on the conversation. And uh, some people find it a little scary, but it's, it's not to that. Uh, programmatic marketing chat bots, do they work? So this is a prime example. Um, this is Visit Rainier. And they say they've done the chat bot for the year 2020. And it got engaged 26,709 conversations. Uh, the, the bot collected 2,194 email addresses. That means rather than you having to ask or try to get the email address for later marketing, you know, email marketing, which hopefully you're doing as well, um, lots of free programs around email marketing, you know, your MailChimps and things like that. Uh, so it collected almost 2,200 email addresses that, um, that we didn't have to do anything for. They had to jump in and answer 1,900, almost 2,000 visitor questions manually because of things the bot couldn't answer. And that's where you will get the notification and you get those triggers and, um, the bot, you know, says, okay, I can't answer that. Let me trigger a human. Um, they actually tracked 481 room night stays to the chat bot, which yielded them approximately $80,000 in revenue. So you can see that the chat bot is, um, it paid off for them. Uh, what, what I didn't put in here was the cost of the development of the chat bot, because this one's really custom. The way you look at chat bots is basically you have a trunk and then you have these branches. If the user travels this branch, then these are your questions, answers, questions, answers, questions, answers. And most chat bots um, have about 10 to 15 branches. Whereas this one had a little over I think it's almost 40, uh, 40 branches. And so this one actually costs them roughly 35 K to build, but it, in the first year it generated 80,000 in revenue. Um, so it's working and an unexpected perk that they were able to see common questions because you get a transcription or can go back and review all of these chatbot conversations. And that'll also help you adjust the chat bot if you see issues in your programming or not programming, but your tree set up. But um, they were able to turn those questions into blogs, social media posts, newsletter content, um, and written by real life humans and were asked by real life humans. So they got to address those. And, um, you know, sometimes you'll see how quickly someone can write out a question 37 times in a row it's easy to optimize that and turn it into um, turn it into some real meaty social media posts and uh, blog posts, some content for your viewers. Because chances are, if they're on your website and haven't interacted with the bot yet, they're going to be asking that question. So you can head those questions off. Um, if you want to see the the bot in action, you can go in there and play with it. Uh, yes, it, you know, once you get to a point a real human will jump in, but uh, you can hit visit Rainier.com and, and see that chat bot. It'll pop up in the bottom right corner. And so when I mentioned about them being able to collect, you know, 2,200 email addresses programmatically without them doing anything, um, this brings me to automated email. Um, so with automated email, you can deliver personalized messages with user specific content. So your, your email campaigns, if you use, um, again, with some AI, it will look at what the user has looked at throughout your site and then uh, predictively tech or detect what they may be interested in and deliver that email that is pertinent to them. And kind of like with the bots, you, you kind of set up those branches. Well, these, these are my main market verticals. You know, I've got healthcare, I've got um, uh, visitors uh, or tourism, healthcare, tourism, and uh, food. 
So those are my main verticals. Well, I can see this AI has watched this user uh, click on food three times and health once. And maybe that health article mentioned something about food in it is why they clicked on it. So now I'm going to build an email surrounding what we do in the food space and send that to them, hopefully entice them to take the next step. And um, so you can use them from basic abandoned cart notifications. Believe it or not, that is a really dumbed down version of AI. You've abandoned your cart. The AI bot sees this and then says, and if you're an Amazon shopper, you've probably got these notifications. It says, hey, you left this in your cart. Um, did you mean to check out? Well, that's, that's a very dumbed down AI, but it is AI um, seeing an action that you didn't take. So I'm going to provide a reaction. My, that reaction is sending you the notification. Um, but anyway, with that customized content, it allows more click-through rates because rather than just blasting out something I hope you're interested in, now I know what you're interested in and I'm going to feed you that content. And most automated campaigns fall into two categories, event-based and drip feed, email. So here's examples of drip feed. Um, if I, or drip feed and event-based. So say for example, I set up this drip feed email and I'm trying, I've got a bunch of cold leads where I went to a trade show event or you know, I've collected a month's worth of email addresses from my website from a free white paper or whatever. So they're kind of cold, they're a little warm, but mostly cold. So I want to trigger this email that does the work for me. And it says, you know, it sends out an email, it says, hey Susie, free for lunch Wednesday? And then it checks, um, no, yes. So if, if she says no, uh, if she replied no, then it says, are we still on for tomorrow? If she replied yes, then I get the notification and I book the meeting. If no response, then she gets, um, are, are we still on for tomorrow? Which creates a little bit of panic because at first brush, she's gonna be like, wait a minute, there's nothing on my calendar. I didn't sign, I don't think that I booked the meeting, but maybe I did. And so she's gonna read into it further. Hopefully you have some messaging in there that says, okay, yes, I am in. So let's book the meeting. And then um, if she doesn't reply, sorry, that didn't work out. Uh, and then we do a little bit more of a re-engagement at the bottom of that email. And then that's the end of the drip unless she takes another action on that one, which will start a secondary drip. And then event-based trigger emails are just that. They're based on events, you know, from royalty programs where you've reached, uh, you know, X amount of orders within a given time from your customers and you send them out a promo code. This one, for example, is six months together. Thanks for showing us our love. Here's a promo code. Um, birthdays, various things like that that are based on events that automatically go out and you don't have to do anything and they are customized for that user. So it, it does create um, more click-through rates. And again, you don't have to do anything other than set it up once. Um, most automation campaign, campaigns, like I said, fall into two categories, event-based event and trigger-based. Um, you got your welcome emails, your onboarding, getting started with your product or service, the abandoned carts, refer a friend, milestones, birthdays, uh, join dates, specific milestones. And then, like I said, you've got the drip feed, um, monthly newsletters, and those those drip out. That's why they're called drip. They're, they're, they drip out to the customer or potential client uh, periodically just to keep them engaged and keep your brand, your customer, your service, your product, whatever, top of mind for them. Um, and then special content delivery. You know, you can set up triggers that's, all right, I released this new food blog article and I want that to go to all of the people that shown an interest in food. Or I've done this in manufacturing. I want all of my clients who are interested in, um, break parts to 
go to this place uh, or send them this blog post that I've written. Um, and then sales automation, just like I showed in the, in the other one where it helps the workflow for you and keeps, keeps your website working, keeps all of your digital spaces working while you're off trying to chase the next one. Um, all of these things I've delve a little, could dive so deep into that I'm just scratching the surface, but I want you to know that you, you don't have to do it alone. Um, you know, call, like I said, call friends, call family, um, look, reach out to your social nephew or whatever. They, chances are they're, they're going to help you, you know, even if it's just, you know, okay, uncle or whatever. Yeah. I'll do a post for you or I'll oh, man, you know, a lot of them would chomp at the bit to manage your social site just a little bit. And you can make them, you don't have to make them administrators. You can make them uh, contributors and things like that so that you get to see it before they post. They don't just get to post willy nilly. You can see it, approve it, it goes live um, or make your edits. Uh, so, you know, there's lots of people in these circles that you can tap and, and get the best bang for your buck. Cause uh, buck, a lot of this stuff is, can be expensive. So tap those if, if money's tight. And then if you don't have those in your circle, feel free to give me a call or email or whatever. I would love to help you out. I hope it's been informative and um, I don't see any questions or anything. Uh, I have, I have a bunch on my sheet of paper, but uh, oh, do I, I do want to say to those uh, watching or uh, joining us, if you have any questions, uh, please put those in the Q and a for, uh, for Bill, but um, Bill, you got my attention on the automated emails uh, programs. And is there a program that you use to set that up that automation? There is. Um, there's a number of them that exist, but um, we we chose to use, uh, I'll go ahead and give you the name of it because they actually give agencies um, a deeper discount than you can go and get yourself. So our price to you is actually cheaper than if you went and got it yourself, but um, it's called Sharp Spring. Sharp Spring? Yes. And um, it's very, you know, for, for all the automation that it can do, it's very, very affordable. And uh, so I compare it to like a HubSpot or a Salesforce, if you're familiar with those. Yes, yes. I know yeah. both. Yeah. So um, it's very comparable to those, but a 16th of the price. Okay. Uh, can you take off share um, yes. uh, screen sharing um, on that sharp spring? Is it, is there a lot of programming involved and does it take like, can you put use Excel like lists and it import those into it? You sure can. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. The only programming, so to speak. Um, and it's not, and you don't have to is, is building the email template. They have a lot of pre-built email templates, but if you want something custom, then you kind of have to code those out yourself. Okay. That, that's over my head, but that's, that's why we have people like you. In right. regards to videos, which I do believe that video is extremely hot right now and that I know for myself, I have a short attention span to see someone on a video tell me about it versus me reading a lot of copy. I want to choose the video every time. Oh yeah. But if I was doing a video or one of our small businesses or organizations viewing, what are maybe the top three or four things that they should make sure they include in that video? Okay. Currently, because of the state of things, wear a mask, gloves, be clean. Um, if, if you're pickpacking and shipping something or whatever, um, because of the mindset of COVID and everything, currently you want to make sure you're doing that. You're doing healthy things, you know, to keep them safe. And that's just the current state of things. You, know, you mean you're showing things. them in the video? Yeah, yeah. If you're I mean, doing if a creating video. creating the video myself and I, I mean, whatever kind of business, let's say, for example, the Chamber of Commerce. Uh-huh. 
uh, if they're creating, they're putting videos up though, what would be the, the, the major, like four things they, they put up? I mean, they include, I'm sorry, in that video. Yeah. The, um, four main things, I guess, say for the chamber of commerce, um, you know, it would be a quick benefits of membership. And like I said, currently, if, if they're shooting, say a, a selfie or whatever, um, and they're walking through the office or whatever and talking, because people do like to see people. So you want to put the human face in there too. But if they're walking through the office, do make sure and do the, the correct, you know, COVID stuff right now. Um, Cause that is important and top of mind to a lot of people right now. But um, I would say benefits of membership, uh, you know, take a short spiel on one of those and, um, and then maybe a quick success story that someone's had as being a member of the chamber. And um, let's see, chamber, uh, what they've done in the community. And uh, so the very quick uh, tidbits like that, don't, don't go into huge detail. And then I, I would even do almost like a series, if they could, where maybe they go out and interview a member once a month and have them talk about, you know, what's, what the chamber's done for them and things like that. And that, those kind of things have legs so that, you know, the, you can start a series and you have your content. It's not trying to come up with a new idea. How many times are you going to regurgitate, you know, the benefits, the, what they've done, things like that. Yeah. And I just wanted to contribute when you were talking about groups and how it's good to be in groups with like-minded individuals or industry sectors. Um, because this got me out of a jam more than once, but a good example is a number of years ago, um, I was contacted by a House of Delegate member of the state of Virginia and asked me, Sandy, could you tell me what the multiplier index by job loss by this industry sector and so forth? I, I said, uh, not off the top of my head, but could you give me you know, a couple of days to look it up? Well, the first thing I did for years, uh, I have been part of a group on LinkedIn of economic developers from all over the world. And the very first thing that I did after I got off the phone was I went to LinkedIn and asked, how do I determine the multiplier uh, index for job loss by this industry sector, by this MSA area? I got some great feedback, things like, why didn't I think of that? But I did have someone that was in a metropolitan area and said, I subscribe to a service. It's very expensive. But if you'll tell me the location, the industry sector, the number of jobs, the, the average wage rate, I'll do look it up for you. Well, 7 a.m. the next morning, guess what was in my email? You and by it. being in that group of like-minded individuals, I was able to respond to that House of Representatives with, with, within less than 24 hours. Right. And do you not think that that put my credibility up in his mind when he has a constituent having questions about starting or growing a business in Virginia? So I do agree. And it's great to find out what new products. You're not the only guy out there, me either, that's doing the same thing. And we've encountered problems. It's good to hear what other uh, people have, how they dealt with those problems um, mm -hmm. and embraced it and and so I, I do totally agree with that. And then um, about websites, that's a question I've, I've gotten a, a number of times. And I'm sure you're aware of those um, those sites out there like Weebly and Wix. And, and you mentioned about Squarespace. Mm -hmm. Have you looked at those? And for that individual that wants just a basic page, just so they have a presence to start if they're starting their business. Do you have a recommendation of any of those sites that they might, maybe one's better than the other? Well, um, I, I hate, you know, I hate to recommend one just because they're, the pros are they're, they're great for finally getting a presence, having a place to direct people and things like that. Um, there are a little bit of cons with them. Uh, one, they use, they're built on um, proprietary language. So once you outgrow that, you'll, you'll have to start from ground zero and rebuild a new website based on a 
platform of some sort, whether it's WordPress or whatever. Um, and those, those platforms are billed monthly. So Google looks at those that's like Squarespace, Wix, everything. Um, your website is here this month. It may not be next month because you didn't pay the bill. So we're not going to rank you as well. So they don't rank as well SEO wise, but they're definitely a great place to start. And my favorite is Wix. Okay. Yeah. But what it, I'm hearing that it might be better that you just go ahead and spend a little extra at the beginning, because if you do, you grow and you have to change from, you know, you've done all you can do on Wix and right. you're ready to go, then you're going to have to start over on a new platform because that just doesn't go back. I mean, you just can't transfer that. You can't. No, um, you, you can't even bring out the content. You, you have to copy and paste and basically rebuild. Um, WordPress is honestly one of our favorite platforms. Believe it or not, it drives 30% of the Internet as a whole. It's the single largest CMS by a long shot. And it's free. It's open source. It's free. And it, it's not got that big of a learning curve. Google loves it, ranks it well. Um, so there's, and WordPress has a theming system now. So, you know, you can go and install your own theme. It's, it's not that difficult. And um, it's not a drag and drop editor, but uh, they've came leaps and bounds, but you can install plugins, which will give you drag and drop functionality. Okay. Well, I see that one can grow to anything. That okay. platform can handle e-commerce, can handle video, can handle podcasts. Yeah, a number of sites that I deal with use WordPress, so I, I, I I'm familiar with that. Yeah. Well, I don't see any other questions. Uh, Bill, thanks so much uh, for you know taking the time of your, your valuable time to lead this session today and sharing some of your expertise with our group and. And I want to thank all of those that are tuning in with us today. Thanks for taking your lunch hour and, and joining us. And hopefully you've learned some tips. I know I did um, on the, the, the new uh, automated emails and some of the other, the, the bots out there. So thanks. Um, yeah. as, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, today's session is being recorded and it will be available on the uh, Virginia Highland Small Business Incubators Facebook page. And then our YouTube channel, New Knowledge, uh, it's up there. There's over, I'd say there's close to 125 or more um, on-demand workshops that we've been doing um, over the last eight years. It's available for you at no cost. Uh, just a plug for uh, in two weeks on February the 17th, we will focus on cybersecurity and protecting your data. That will be our next New Knowledge and uh, Jonathan Evident with uh, Agus IT Solutions will be leading that. So I hope you'll be able to join us. And uh, please share uh, today's uh, workshop uh, with others once you get the um, link and uh, share with others this content. I think it's valuable. And again, uh, Bill, we couldn't do it without experts like yourself. So I appreciate it. I know the time it takes to prepare. Yeah, well, I appreciate, I appreciate the opportunity and I hope somebody walks away with something. Great. I know I did. All right. Sounds good. Stay warm, everybody, and see you in a couple weeks. Have a good All day. Right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.